I wish that as a Christian, and of course especially as a preacher of the gospel of Christ, one who tries to also to defend the faith, that I could appreciate more number of principles in the scriptures that I understand, but yet I'd like to understand them even better and better have the viewpoint that God has toward them. And that's part of developing and growing up in Christ. And one of those is the unity that God expects in the members and between the members and among the members of His Son's church. Unity is so closely connected with fellowship and vice versa. Because where there is not oneness or unity among the brethren, there's not going to be the fellowship that God wants there to be between brothers and sisters in Christ and His spiritual family. So I wish that I could appreciate all of that even more, although that not to say that I don't appreciate it at all, that's rather obvious. Before our Lord died, just before He died, we have John recording a prayer of his when he was in the garden and when he says in verse 19 talking about the apostles and for their sakes I sanctify myself set myself apart to do the things I only can do is what that means but he says I do it for a purpose more than just myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth now you remember back some ten chapters earlier that John says that Jesus stated, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And here in his prayer on the night before his crucifixion, he says that they also might be sanctified, set apart, meet for the master's service. As Christians, we are saints. I wish people would understand that. And you see what Roman Catholicism has done to it. Somebody will justify sin in their life and they'll say, well, I'm no saint. They might as well say, I'm no Christian. I'm no member of the Lord's church. And by implication, they're saying, I'm still an alien sinner and when I die, I'll go to hell. Well, that really says a lot, doesn't it? But they don't understand what the Bible teaches about being a saint. And what makes a member of the Lord's church a saint or set apart. But notice, after he says this in his prayer about the apostles, he says, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Now, here's where he started praying for you and me. Because we have believed on him. We have believed him to be the Son of God, the Savior of the world. Because of the word preached to us. Then he says that they all may be one. Well, I understand unity between a husband and a wife. And of course, there's not much of that as there used to be in this country today. And we suffer the consequences all through the families and the lack of families and the non-functional families. However else you want to describe it, sin is the cause of it. But he says that they all may be one. Then he gives an example. And this is an amazing thing. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou sent me. This is the reason that I really don't understand how People in denominations, especially, not the only ones, but people in denominational churches, can stand for a system that demands separation among those who believe in Jesus Christ as a Son of God. And they attempt to justify it. How, what do they get out of these words? Well, I think they probably read more into them than what they get out of them. And yet I don't just point at the denominational churches. The Lord's church has had all kinds of splits go on in it. There were schisms in the church when the New Testament was still being written in the first century. Yet the will of Jesus Christ 
as he prayed for us almost 2,000 years ago before his death, is that we would be one even as he and his father are one. Now how are his father and him one? Well, that's a question great many theologians have tried to figure. Because it's a oneness that's not like totally and completely the unity between a husband and wife as they have become one unit and operate as the Bible says husband and wife ought to. Of course, that's certainly a oneness as it fits marriage and the home. But the oneness that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit has is a oneness of essence. Now, explain to me, preacher, what you mean by oneness, and especially with that word essence. I can't. The essence is what they actually are. Yet there are three personalities who have that essence of deity. No beginning, no ending. Inhabits eternity. Omnipresent. Omniscient. Omnipotent. And it's whatever they are. And now we search for words because we start trying to use words that fits our situation. Whatever they consist of, best I can do. It's eternal. Well, my mind goes bonkers right there. How do you exist without a beginning? God has no beginning. We are limited to time and space. He created those and then made a world out of all of the galaxies and the universe and then only one planet in one galaxy that was fitted for man. I don't understand all of that because the secret things belong to God but the things that are revealed unto us and our children forever. They're needful for us to live as the Lord wants us to live here on this earth. And we must live if heaven's to be our home. So Jesus, well let's just put it the way, this way. The first, second, third persons of the Godhead. The second person who became incarnate in our Lord on this earth for a while. There is a togetherness. A unity. A oneness in all things because of the essence of their being. That he has prayed that we be one even as he and his father are one. I know what that does do for me. It causes me to realize whew, what a oneness he is asking us to have. Now there's another thing too that comes out in this as to that oneness. That we in the church, the spiritual body of Christ and the many members that make it up. That we might be one even as he and his father are one. And that has to do with authority. And let me emphasize that point right here. There's not, never going to be the unity for which Christ prayed unless there is that understanding, that appreciation, and that desire on behalf of mankind for the authority 